Okay, so now for quadric surfaces. So quadric surface is a general, uh, it is a much more general way to represent a surface that is in second degree. So you can say that a cylinder is a quadric surface. Now, so quadric surfaces is uh, above the cylind uh, a cylinder. So we have a general form of a quadric surface. So actually, it is hard to imagine what's a quadric surface. We can just draw a quadric surface. But uh, these terms is usually, uh, sorry, not this one, but this, wait, I, I think this one as well. So if we consider, or we, we, we don't consider the tilting, actually, if it is tilted, your, your, your graph is tilted, we have to include, we have to include this, these terms. But if, uh, if it is, what would you call this, parallel, no, parallel within our axis, then we only need this four terms, no? So to make things simpler now, but uh, the general equation for quadric surfaces is still this. Okay, so let's try sketching a quadric surface with this equation. So how do we do this now? No? So one way to do this is we can assume a value of, let's say, the last, the last uh, variable here. So let's say z is equal to zero. So basically, say, so assumption lang, no? assume z is equal to zero. So when z is equal to zero, this will become x squared plus y squared over nine is equal to one. So what is this now? Is this a circle? So this is not a circle anymore. This is actually an ellipse. No? So this is an ellipse. And if you can imagine, or if you graph this, so what does this mean? What is the major and the minor axis? You know, if this is an ellipse. So the major axis here is the y or the x. So the y is the major axis. No, actually the y is the major axis here. So whichever, whoever has the higher <laughs> uh, denominator is the major axis. So this will be uh, the, the y. So this will look like this. No, uh, just a rough approximation. So the, the, the semi-major axis can be found, no? which is 9. Uh, actually, 9 squared is equal to the major axis, which is A squared. So A, uh, A is equal to 3. Basically, so the, the length of this is 3. And then for this one, so this is A over 1. So we know that. B squared is equal to 1, so therefore B is equal, equal to 1, so therefore this length right here is equal to 1. Okay, so if we draw this again, also this is the y axis, this is the x axis, so if we consider this in a three dimensional space, three dimensional space, uh, we have this as x and this as uh, the y. So if z is equal to zero, no, if z is equal to zero, therefore this is uh, the z-axis. So this is the z is equal to zero, no, this, this plane right here. Uh, the one that touches both the x and the y-axis. We will have, no, so if this is the y and this is the x, then we will have an ellipse that looks like this. Right? So this is just a rough approximation of this ellipse. But that is not what we are looking for. <laughs> No, we just simplify this. Uh, in order to draw this, we have to use traces. So what is a traces? What are traces? You know? So we can simplify this. We can, we can simplify this into an ellipse again. And instead of making this z is equal to 0, we can uh, transpose this to the other side. So we have uh, x squared plus y squared over 9 is equal to 1 minus z squared over 4. Okay? So if we, no, if we can see this right-hand side, what should be the domain of this right-hand side? What should be the values of z? So domain and range po, you know? So what is the domain? What is the domain? Domain of z. So as we can see on the right-hand side, this will always be positive. And usually an ellipse, no, this should be uh. Uh, less than or equal to 1. So therefore, the range of this is less than or equal to 1, right? 
So the value of z here, so if 1 minus uh, z squared over 4, the, the, the range is uh, less than or equal to 1, then therefore to find its domain, we can solve for z. So transposing this to the other side, we have 1 uh, is less than or equal to 1 plus z squared over 4. And then transposing this to the other side, we have a 0, right? Oh, no, 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 no. Greater than. Wait, I'm sorry. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So this will become zero, right? Uh, no, 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 no. Hmm. No. Okay, when we're dealing with uh fractions nga pala, no, we have to, to consider this. We should rewrite this. We cannot just transpose this nga pala. No? So we have here 4 minus z squared over 4 is less than or equal to 1. So there are two conditions here. And this will be a little bit longer than usual if we solve this. Uh, I won't solve this anymore. But by inspection only, you know, as you can see here, what is the maximum value of z? What is the minimum value of z here? So the minimum value of z here in the number line is negative 2. So, so z should be greater than or equal to negative 2. Ano? Okay. Uh, this should be greater than or equal to 0 rin pala, no? So we are solving this two equations. And this should be less than or equal to positive 2. So to make this one, or, or uh, less than or equal to, uh, or within 0 and 1, the, the, the value of z here should be negative 2 or positive 2, right? Okay, so if z is equal to 0, this will become 1. If z is negative 2, this will be negative 2 squared. So this will be 1 minus 4 over 4, which is equal to 0. Okay, so it will reach its minimum. So as you can see, z here will be from negative 2 to positive 2. So we have to take note of this. So if we can see here, the, the, the traces here for z will be like this. No? So the, the, the z here will be at the minimum at uh, negative 2. So it will have a, an ellipse no? in here. And then uh, we have an ellipse here at positive 2. So as you can see, the, the trace here will be like this. And then for the bottom, so we have a bottom here. It's hard to really visualize this. No? And then and so on uh, at the bottom. And then for for the other variables as well, we can try transposing this to the other side to just check what are the limits, no? So for uh, transposing y squared, let's say we have x squared plus z squared over 4, and then equals to 1 minus y squared over 9. So the domain of y here, if we want this to be within, within 0 and 1, Okay, so because this will not be zero, no, uh, at worst case, it will be zero. Okay, and since an ellipse is just, no, is equal to one, it should be equal to one. So this will be, or the domain of y here, will be from negative, sorry, it should be nine, no? Negative three to uh, positive three. So the y here will be positive 3 here and negative 3 on the other side. So you can imagine an ellipse with, uh, with, uh, with this major axis, so 2, and then 1 on the x-axis. So this will be something like this. So that will be your traces. Okay? And then for, for identifying also the, the, the limits here, so we, all, we already identified the limits here. Also here, so for the limits for the x-axis, we can now transpose this x squared term here to have y squared over 9 plus z squared over 4 is equal to 1 minus x squared 
So the domain here of 1 minus x squared okay, should be from what? No? So we have negative 1 to positive 1. So negative 1 to positive 1. So therefore, there should be negative 1, this point, and this will be positive 1. So the, the, the drawing of this or the sketch of this uh, surface will look like this. Ayan. So that is why no, we have this uh, example. It is called an ellipsoid. Okay. So a surface that has an ellipse at, as its cross section is called an ellipsoid. Okay, for the last one, we have this surface z is equal to y squared minus x squared. So this is a little bit challenging to imagine. But uh, we can just imagine, let's say this is the sketch, no? So we have x and y and z axis. So x, y, and z axis. Okay. So one technique that we can do is we can make this, uh, uh, let's say, for we can start with x, you know, or z. We can start with z. So if we make this zero, what happens? No? So if we make this zero, what happens is that this will become a hyperbola. You know? This will become a hyperbola. And if we cancel this y, if we make this zero, this will become a parabola. You know? If we cancel this as zero, we can see a parabola. So we have a combination of a, a hyperbola as a cross section or a trace and, uh, and a hyperbola. So let's say we, we transverse this Z. So let's just say, we just assume, no? To make things easier, we just assume the value of, let's say, Z is equal to zero. Uh, let's say negative one and positive one. So if Z is equal to zero, what happens, no? So if we graph this with regards to to the the values of let's say uh, y and x only, so this is x and y. So if z is equal to zero, this will be hyperbola, right? So the hyperbola is uh, is it vertical or horizontal? If this is the the measurement, no? So we can see here that this will be. Uh, actually, this is not a hyperbola since if we find a square root, we have x is equal to y pala. No? So if z is equal to 0, uh, actually this will be y squared minus x squared. So this will, uh, if we transpose this, we have x squared is equal to y squared. And this will reduce into x is equal to y. So if z is equal to 0, this will be just, since this is positive and negative, no? the, the graph of this, if we consider only the positive, this will be x is equal to y. Okay. And then if we consider a change in sign, or let's say this is positive, this is negative, then this will be your graph. So this is the graph. No, these are the graphs when z is equal to zero. And when z is negative, if we can see if z is negative, so if this is negative now, so z is negative, let's say one. We have y squared minus x squared. Okay, and then if we simplify this, we multiply here negative 1. So this will become 1 is equal to, this will become uh, negative y squared plus x squared. Or in other words, we can just flip this uh, terms here. So we have x squared minus y squared, right? So what is this? Is this a horizontal or a vertical parabola? No. So we can imagine now if this is, uh, uh, if we substitute here, let's say positive uh, 2, this will become, uh, uh, it's hard for positive 2, no? so I think uh, positive 2 and okay. it's really hard to imagine no? <laughs> to, to solve this. But one clue that you should remember or parabola, no? so this is actually a par uh, sorry, hyperbola. Hyperbola, you can just determine no, one thing if it is vertical or horizontal. So if the x is positive in this form, okay, so what is the form? No? So the form, the general form or the standard form of a parabola is 
we have x squared over a squared minus y squared over a squared, sorry, b squared is equal to 1, like you can remember, right? So, if, uh, if you can see here now, if, if this is positive, then it is horizontal. Okay, remember that. If this is uh, y squared over a squared minus x squared over b squared, then this is vertical. So, when z is equal to 1, this will be, uh, parang, uh, it is like two parabolas, no? I will just fix this. Uh, it is not the best drawing I can, I can do, ano? So, when z is equal to negative 1, z is equal to negative 1. Okay? And when z is positive 1, so when z is positive 1, this will be x squared minus y squared. This is still a hyperbola, no? And this will be a vertical 1. Uh, sorry, y squared pala to, no? Y squared minus x squared. So, this will be a vertical parabola. Therefore, this will be the graph. Uh, it looks like this. Yeah. So, if you would imagine, if you will have this uh, graph in uh, in a three-dimensional space, it is kind of clumsy here, no? This is actually called a contour map, no? But if you, if you draw this again, yeah, it is hard to really imagine this, no? Okay, so we have here the y-axis and the x-axis. So, this is the x, this is the y, this is the z. So, when z is equal to 0, meaning this is the z is equal to 0, no? This plane here. When it touches the x and y axis, it touches the x and y axis. So it will be just, as you can see, no. With regards to this line, uh, we have this. It's really hard, no. Draw this. So we have this two lines. Draw this, ano. And if z is negative, so meaning z is negative here. So below here, no. Below this z axis is negative, and above this is positive. So for negative 1, the drawing here will be this horizontal parabola. So in this perspective, it is opening towards the x-axis. So it will be drawn like this. No? So if this is, I, okay, sorry. So if it is drawn here, if this is v is equal to negative 1, then you have this graph for z is equal to negative 1. Ano? So, for the other side as well, it's a little hard to understand, no? Yeah. We have another drawing of this hyperbola. And then for this, uh, when z is positive, where is it? When z is positive 1, okay, for this one as well. So, this drawing, no? This vertical uh, hyperbola, it will look something like uh, it will face through the y-axis. So this will look, if this is z is equal to positive, uh, we have already a lot of drawings, no? So we have here a drawing of this, this trace, no? Again. So it, really, it is really under, hard to understand, no? If, if, if we visualize this, it will look something like this. So for, for, for the bottom, you know, we have this. No? So if z is negative, we have this drawing, hyperbola, if z is equal to 0, as you can see now, it will be just a flat. No? And if, if it is uh, in the z positive, this will be the drawing. So it is really hard to draw, no? to be honest. So this will be your graph. So we can do this as well, not only limited for, for uh, the z no? assumption, you can also assume for y or for x. You can do, draw this differently. No? Uh, for this example. So that's it for this example. So the drawing is this. And uh, why is this important? So we can utilize this, this concept for designing, well, designing uh, infrastructure. Well, what, these are the examples of infrastructure and uh, materials that we usually use for this one. So uh what is this called pala no? So this is called a uh, hyper hyperbolic paraboloid. Uh, I'll just sorry. So uh, for this one we have uh the first one is a paraboloid. Okay. 
we have here uh, hyperboloid. Uh, I don't know uh, what is this called pala, no? So I will just mention this. <laughs> but uh, there is a uh, definition for this. And then uh, the helical tears uh, also utilize quadric surfaces. Okay, so that is all for this uh, video. So see you in class. And if you have any questions, just see me and Jess. Okay. Thank you, guys. Oh, where is it?